Today, we're really happy to kick off the first in a series where Global Kids will be interviewing elected officials all around the city and talking to them about the importance of the 2020 census. Today, we're really happy to have Assembly Member Aravella Simotis, as well as two incredible Global Kids leaders from William Cullen Bryant High School in Astoria. Um, we have Saloa and Sarah. So I'm going to hand it over to our Census Squad to lead us in this conversation with Assembly Member Simotis. Thank you so much for joining today's first ever Census Sundays with Global Kids. I am Saloa Sitiki from Bryan High School. I'm in 12th grade and I'm a GK member. I'm Census member from Global Kids. Hi, I'm Sarah Flores Garcia. I'm a student in ninth grade at Global, uh, I'm sorry, at Bryan High School and a member of Global Kids Census Squad. The Global Kids is encouraging people to fill out their Census 2020. And we're excited here today to talk with NY Assemblywoman, Arvella Samoros, and why is it important to be counted? Hi girls, it's really a pleasure to be joining you today. Thank you so much. Um, so we'll be discussing why it's important to be counted. And as we know, she's been the first Greek American woman to be elect elected in office in New York and the first to represent her district in state assembly. So um, thank you, Assemblywoman Samoros, for being here with us today. Today, we're going to talk about what the census is and why is it important to be counted. Sarah, any questions? Assembly members, so I represent District 36 in the New York State Assembly. Um, can you tell us a bit about what the census self-response has been in, uh, in Astoria and what has been like in 2010? Of course, in Astoria uh, right now, the self-response rate has been about 42%, which um, is disappointing because, disappointing because we want um, as many of our neighbors as possible to fill out the census. Mm -hmm. Um, what was the self-response rate in 2010 and what is it currently right now? Well, in the last uh, census in 2010, the district had about a 68.5, I think, uh, percent uh, self-response rate. And, um, you know, but that, of course, was after the entire census was completed. So it wasn't just those who filled out the census when they received it in the mail, it was also after the entire process. So right now um, we're, we're lacking, um, we're lacking in terms of a response rate and uh, we have to make sure that we encourage our neighbors to fill out the census form that they received in the mail. Sarah, do you want to ask any questions? Uh, yes, um, Assemblywoman Simoras, why do we have to fill out the census and what does this mean for our community? Look, it's incredibly important that we fill out the census because so much federal funding relies on how much of a population our census uh, designates that we have. Um, we get money for uh, decisions are made where to build more schools, where to build more hospitals, how much money should flow back to our communities for uh, special programs, um, you know, for food, for food banks, or for um, different services, um, for vouchers, for housing. Um, and um, if we don't have an accurate count, the federal government is not able to determine how much, uh, how much of the taxes that we send to, uh, to, to our federal government, we should get back. So that's why it's incredibly important that every person fills out the census and that they do so as accurately as possible. Um, you know, one of the problems is sometimes our neighbors get the census form in the mail and they don't know that they need to include everyone in their household. So they might not include children or babies that are in their household or um, some neighbor or some relative who's staying with them for um, a short period of time. Um, or, you know, because we have, sometimes we have a, a bit of a transient population and we have neighbors who might not speak um, English so they don't understand uh, what the census is and they don't understand the form. Or we have people who might be um, not trusting of the form and, 
and providing personal information. Um, so it is a challenge, but it's important that as many of our neighbors as possible fill out the census because only then can we get the resources that we need to support our communities. I absolutely agree. Where do you think we are in right now in our state and how does this compare to national averages or like other states? Um, well, right now, as I mentioned, uh, we are at a about a 42 percent uh, response rate. Um, and if you compare that to the entire borough of Queens, uh, the the average is about 40. So we're doing a little bit better than the average of Queens. Now the state's entire average is about 40, about 47%, I believe it's 46.6%, um, but the national average is 52.4%. Okay, so you've mentioned some barriers that prevent our communities from being counted. So can you give us some examples of what programs census count impacts in Astoria? Could you repeat that question? I'm sorry. Can you give us some examples of what programs the census count impacts in Astoria? Oh yes, of course. Well, you know, um, I have some notes. So Medicaid, mm -hmm. Medicare, the, um, the CHIPS program, which is the program that supports um, children who, don't, who aren't um, covered for health insurance. Because in New York, uh, we passed a law several years ago to make sure that every child is, receives health care. Um, but also the, um, the census will also affect the resources we have for programs like SNAP, which allows families to purchase food, or WIC, or TANF, or like I mentioned before, um, Section 8 housing vouchers to allow to give support to our um, neighbors to be able to have places to live. Um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, those are the programs. We also, you know, we get money for we get federal funds and um, federal grants for things like um, food pantries. And, you know, so, but depending on the population that we show we have during the census, we get a percentage of resources back for our communities. And that's why it's so critically important for everybody to fill out the census. Because if the federal government does not acknowledge how, ma how many neighbors we have in this community, we won't get our fair share of funding from the federal pot of money when they're allocating when they're allocating um, distributions for these particular programs. Also, and to add into that, um, ten years before the last census, we lost two congressional seats. So this year, we're actually trying to spread the word. We're trying hard so that it doesn't repeat again. You're absolutely right. I mean, federal representation is so critically important for us, as we see. Um, our congressional delegation, and I think it's, I believe it's a bipartisan effort, is trying to make sure that um, the, our state receives relief right now to cope with this uh, pandemic because um, our receipts in the state are, you know, they're, they're uh, vastly below what we thought we would have when uh, we passed our first budget. And now potentially we have to, you know, we may have to be responsible for cutting more money out of the budget. Um, and again, um, the state, we determine, you know, what programs are funded. So it's important that, again, that the federal government understands how much popular, how many people, how many neighbors live in our communities. Um, because if we lose more federal representation, we won't have um, as many Congress members fighting for us, fighting, you know, fighting for their fair share for our state. Now, again, as you mentioned, we lost two last time, and we're at risk of losing at, you know, one, potentially two this time around. And that will, ha that will have a very, very drastic effect because, as we all know, we have a set number of uh, federal congressional leaders in Washington, and if one is taken away from us, it's given to another state, and then the share of the share of funding that goes to that particular congressional representative also goes to that state. So we can't afford to do that. Absolutely, Sarah, um, are you there with us? 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, would you like um, to ask this question? Yeah, so how is COVID-19 affecting the census count? <laughs> well, in a couple of different ways. Um, the, the most, you know, one of the very obvious ways is that um, the time frame to co the time frame to complete this, the census has been extended um, previously the under the law it uh, the census the people who are preparing the census were required to send um, the president of the United States a report by December of 2020 that time frame has gotten pushed out into April of 2021. So we do have a little bit more time. As you, um, as you um, could remember, uh, during, our last, uh, during our last chat, um, when I was uh, discussing the census, one, actually, I think I, I, think I did this with, um, with one of your colleagues, Diana, um, on parenting and politics. But nonetheless, what happened last time is that uh, in our last census, we didn't have enough representation because like I, I mentioned before, People don't speak the language. They might be uh, cautious about filling out a form. They might not be trustful of the form and giving their personal information. So what we need to do now to make sure that that doesn't happen is really reach out to our neighbors, whether call them or uh, reach out to them through social media or do exactly what we're doing right now, recording this, um, this, this session live so that we can distribute it to our neighbors so that they can understand how critically important it is that they actually fill out the form. And, um, you know, I know that the census was uh, hiring certain field um, workers to go out and knock on people's doors. That was a part of the census uh, program that because of COVID-19, I, you know, will not be able to happen. However, we still have um, ways to communicate and to make sure that our neighbors understand the importance of filling out these forms. Personally, I can tell you that um, my parents who immigrated to this country um, when their children were, were infants, they never filled out the census form until I got to high school and understood what the census was and actually made my parents fill it out. So it's important that um, everyone, every global kid, um, every friend of, uh, every one of your friends, everyone that you know who's a neighbor, you communicate to them how important it is to make sure that their parents fill out the form, that their neighbors fill out their form, that all your friends fill out the form, your family members. And, um, you know, without that word of mouth, we won't be able to accomplish um, an accurate census count. And that's going to be dangerous for us. I would like to share an experience like before some of the members from Global Kids, we went to school to help parents fill out the pledge cards. But as we approached some of the parents, they said, we don't have time to fill out the census. Um, our information might get leaked. Is this safe? Uh, basically, yes. Um, we actually persuaded them to fill out the census, but actually half of them were like, uh, they just neglected us. So what do you have to say about this? Well, look, I can complete, you know what I can say? that your experience is exactly like my experience uh, a few decades ago. And I'm sure like, um, like um, other people's experiences, you know, distrust in filling out governmental forms, uh, you can understand why people would be distrustful. Why do I have to do this? How is, it, how is it going to affect me? And, you know, first of all, we have to get through uh, past the, the, the language barrier and especially understanding how critically important it is. But once you're able to explain to um, your parents or your, or your parents' friends or your relatives why it's important that, you know, this is going to affect how much school my, how much money my school gets or um, whether or not we can have hospitals in our neighborhoods or whether or not certain assistance will be available to our neighbors who might not be able to afford food. Um, but once you explain it in that granular, granular way, mm -hmm. then um, usually people are more receptive. And another thing is you mentioned that people say, I don't have time. 
no one ever has time because we're all usually working, um, you know, we're not just doing our normal job, but we're, you know, helping our children, we're helping neighbors, we're helping other family members. So that's understandable. However, that's why it's important for uh, kids like you who are part of this program to help your neighbors, to help your parents, to help your relatives or your parents' friends fill out the census for them. It doesn't take much time. It's a, you know, it's a few questions. It's, it's really, um, it's really, it's, it's a simple, you know, it's a simple process. However, you know, I can understand why no one wants to even put any energy into it if they're distrustful of it or if they don't understand the importance of why they have to do it. So again, once you can explain to them, look, this is going, this is going to affect how much school, how much money my school gets or, you know, our roads, because you know what, one way you can describe it to them is, well, do you want, um, do you want our governments to fix our roads and fix all the potholes? Usually people are very sympathetic to that because everyone yeah. complains about the potholes. Um, but if you explain to him, to them that we won't be able to have enough money to do that if we don't show how, how much population lives in our community, they may be more receptive. Yes, absolutely. How does the census impact New York's ability to address public health issues like a pandemic in the future? Oh, Lord, you know, we've talked about this topic um, a few times now since COVID-19. And the fact that we've had many hospital closures in the county of Queens um, over, over the years. And, you know, that we don't have enough hospitals within our neighborhoods to treat um, our community in normal times. Now, during a pandemic, you know, we see what's happening um, uh, in our neighboring, in our neighboring uh, district in, in East Elmhurst, and it's, it's very frightening. And it shouldn't take a pandemic to force us to a recognize that we need to do, um, we need to have more hospitals in our neighborhoods because our communities are just expanding in population. I mean, if you just look at all of the, um, all of the construction and all of the housing construction that's been happening um, around uh, Northwest Queens, you'll know that more people live here, not less. <laughs> um, but um, so certainly, what this pandemic has highlighted is the fact that we need more money for healthcare and, the, and we need more hospitals and hospital beds. And if, but unfortunately, if we don't have an accurate census count, mm -hmm. we won't be entitled to as much as the federal pie as other states may be entitled to. And, you know, it's a shame because, you know, the people live here, we know. We know we live every day. We know how many neighbors we have, or and actually we can understand that more people live in our community now than 10 years ago. So with that being said, we have to make sure that our census count is as accurate as possible. I believe that um, um, in, in, in my assembly district, the 36th assembly district, which is actually one of the smallest assembly districts in the state, because, because of course it was based on the 2010 um, census and when they crafted the district, literally I have I think the second smallest assembly district in, in all, either the smallest or the second smallest in all in the entire state. And um, you know, I can tell you that our population had only increased in size exponentially, not decreased. Um, but, but, but nonetheless, it's important that we all understand this and our role in making sure that not only we fill out the census, mm -hmm. but that we tell everybody that we know how important it is for them to fill it out as well. Thank you. Um, Sarah, the next question, please. Um, how can we help spread the word about the census in our communities with our neighbors? Well, you guys are doing it right now. By hosting, uh, by hosting this um, wonderful Facebook Live uh, session. Um, but really, it is putting this on digital platforms is so important. 
Um, now we have an opportunity to be interconnected because of the internet and because, you know, I think most of the people that we know have a cell phone that has access um, to uh, communication. So either calling people, the, the good old fashioned calling people and making sure that they understand. We can't make visitations anymore. So we have to find new creative ways. Um, like again, like using Facebook and other digital platforms um, that we have at our fingertips as New Yorkers and because of the prevalence of the internet. Um, we can also start telling all of our colleagues. So, you know, you guys are at Bryant, you should call all your friends. And whether they're a global kid or they're not a, a part of the program, you should tell them it's their responsibility to make sure that their parents filled out their census. And you can go online and fill it out. And that's really, you know, if somebody didn't receive the form or they threw the form away, mm -hmm. you could still fill out the census online. Yes. You don't necessarily need to have the actual, um, to have the actual uh, document in your hand. I actually filled it out online, but like on the first day of when they started to count. Um, like I mentioned before, another way to do it is just by phone banking, mm -hmm. calling everyone you know, asking if they may know others that you can call. Um, it is the best way to be able to reach as many people as possible. Um, another way that I have uh, found out is actually pretty, pretty um, successful when I want to communicate things to my neighbors is texting them. Mm -hmm. You could text them. You could text them with a link to filling out the census online because this is the first, I believe this is the first census where information was at, is actually being collected digitally as well. So that's another way you can um, spread the word uh, in, in, in the community. Thank you for that great advice. At Global Kids, we've been working hard enough to spread the word. And some of our friends from one another school in District 36 have made this great video we want to share with you. The census will help decide congressional representation. It is completely confidential. It helps determine how much money your community receives. Communities can use the funding to build more parks, uh, get more resources for schools and libraries. There are many ways to take it. You can do it by phone, mail, or you can even do it online. So really, what are you waiting for? Let's, let's, let's get counted. 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 Let's get counted. Let's get counted. That was awesome. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you have to say about our video? I think it is critically important that you circulate it to as many of your friends and neighbors as possible. Um, and not only in Queens, it can go, it should go viral. It should, it should, uh, it should be circulating, circulating throughout our state and throughout our nation. Um, it's, you know, you, you are providing a very simple message, let's get counted and you're explaining why it's important. Libraries, it's another good, it's another good um, issue that was brought up. You know, there's so much of our um, social services and our goods that, are pro that we're able to provide to our um, citizens in New York State because we get federal grants from, um, from Washington. And the way that um, every state is able to qualify for these federal grants is based on the population, their, their share of the, of the, of the um, national population. So if New York can't show that it has, you know, a pretty significant part of the population that lives in its state, then it's, it won't be entitled to a, you know, a, a significant chunk of the resources that are available um, on the national level. So it's really simple. And, um, you know, I like your video because you're giving a simple message and you're explaining it very clearly about why it's important to get counted. Thank you so much for the great feedback. Um, we know these are uncertain times to live in due to the COVID-19, 
but we also know how important to vote and elections are approaching in June. So what do you think, like, how is the social distan distancing affecting elections in June? Wow, that's a great question. You know, there's been actually some changes that have occurred um, because of this COVID-19 uh, crisis. Um, the governor um, has issued an executive order that any, uh, vote, that any uh, voter can request an absentee ballot and vote by mail, which um, in the past, we didn't have no excuse absentee uh, voting. You had to have an excuse. Right now, the governor has allowed every New Yorker to request an absentee ballot and putting the excuse of temporary illness and disability because he, he, he is allowing every New Yorker to say that um, wanting to social distance and making sure that they're not um, infected with COVID-19, they're able to claim this, um, this exception. But, um, but nonetheless, it's going to take, uh, it's a two-step process now. So if you're not going to the polls to vote, you have to request an absentee ballot. So, you know, I think another project for Global Kids, as you're going and talking to your neighbors about filling out the census, for those that want to vote, you should actually have them fill out these, um, these um, request forms so that they can receive their absentee ballots. So that is one very critical way that our elections in June are going to change. Um, and as in, in, in Astoria, in, in my district, you know, I, I have two congressional races. We have a borough president's race. We have, um, you know, I have a primary election. We have our state uh, senator, senators who have primaries. So every, every level of government will have, um, we'll have an election and potentially there, there may be a presidential primary. We're not sure about that till next week, but nonetheless, um, one very, very important, I believe responsibility we have, it's, it's a inalienable right. We have a right to vote, but it's also our responsibility to vote for the representation that we think is going to do their best to rep, they're, they're gonna do the best job representing us um, in, in government because our elected representatives are the ones who are able to get his resources for our communities. Um, and again, we have to make sure that you can actually have a ballot to vote for. Now, the, the ballot box will be open, the, uh, the polls will be open on election day and we still will have the ability to vote early. But again, with um, social distancing and just a lot of our neighbors not wanting to go and expose themselves, um, at the polls, potentially, they can also request um, a ballot and vote uh, and, and vote at home and vote by mail. Thank you for the great information. Thank you, Assembly Member Simone. Uh, thank you, Assembly Member Simone, for the great information. Uh, one more question before we wrap up. Uh, we know you were a uh, Brian alum. Can you share one memory you have from your time at Brian? Oh, wow. I have so many fond memories of uh, of Bryant and being an owl. I re I remember being um, I was a track I was a track team member, and I remember um, just uh, training with my with my teammates, and also one of you know also going to different meets track meets and uh, really using the subway for the first time to go to a track meet. I also have very fond memories of the multicultural festival that um, uh, that Brian used to used to host. Are you guys still hosting that? Yes, we're still hosting the multicultural. Yeah, but that was always one of my favorite um, favorite things to organize and to be a part of. Um, I'm of, of Greek descent, so my many of my colleagues used to perform Greek dances, but I used to love to watch um, my neighbors uh, perform, uh, to make performances um, and really showcase their culture. Um, it was always uh, one of my favorite things because, you know, for the most part, we were all friends, but you really got to know your classmates a lot better. Is there anything else you will, you want to share with us today? I just want to say that I'm so proud of you, both uh, you ladies, because it's the work that you're doing right now 
with regard to the census will really affect um, our community in a positive way. And I am so happy that you're putting in your time um, in order to help your neighbors and to help your communities. It's inspiring when I see you know, young kids be involved in the process because so many sometimes are either apathetic or they don't really want to get involved or they say they don't have time, you know, but you ladies are, are doing it and um, you really are doing a service um, not only for your classmates, but for your community. So you should be very proud of yourselves. And I just want to say thank you for that. Thank you so much, Assembly Member Samoros, for your time. We're going to encourage everyone to complete the census at my2020census.gov. Please share this video and spread the word. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday.